Hello everyone and welcome to your Chem 113 review on Hun's Rule. My name is Jason and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. So here we're going to try to draw an orbital diagram representing the electron configuration of oxygen. Now keep in mind oxygen has an atomic number of eight on the periodic table. So that means it has eight protons and therefore also eight electrons. So what we're going to do is try to draw what these electrons look like, what each of those orbitals for these electrons look like. So an important fact about orbitals is that orbitals fill in order of increasing energy. That's not what Hund's rule is. We'll, we'll get to Hund's rule, but that is an important fact of um, electrons. So let's look at the various orbitals we'll have in an electron. So if they, if they fill in order of increasing energy, let's start with our smallest possible orbital. So um, that's again, based on your principal number, your secondary number, and then your, your magnetic number. So let's go through each of these. If you have a principal number of one, the smallest you can have, the only possible quantum, uh, secondary quantum numbers you can have uh, is, is zero, which corresponds to S. And here, that gives you um, a magnetic number of zero. So for the principal number one, there is really only one uh, orbital to worry about. One S only has one orbital. Okay. Now we go over to the principal number of, of two. Now two breaks apart. Two has uh, two types of subshells. It has S and it has P, right? The number zero and one. And within each of these, uh, the, the M sub L uh, changes. So for S, the only magnetic quantum number we have is zero. But with P, the magnetic quantum numbers we have are negative one, zero, one. So um, S is lower in energy than P that it has a lower second, uh, it, it's smaller on the secondary quantum number. So the next orbital we can have is 2s, but there's only one of those, one orbital within the 2s subshell. Uh, the next one we can have is 2p, but within the 2p subshell, there are now three options for what orbitals we can have. So within the 2p subshell, we have three orbitals. And this is, this is how we draw these diagrams. And then we'd move up, right? We'd go to three. Now three has um, uh, three secondary quantum numbers, S, P, and D. Each of those has the following um, uh, magnetic quantum numbers. And then so for each of these, they tell you how many orbitals we have. We have one orbital here, we have three orbitals here, and we have, four, uh, we have five orbitals here. So we would have a 3s, we would have a, a 3p, we would have three of those, and then we would have a 3d, and the 3d, we would have five of those. And then it goes on and on and on. So we would just keep going. And so as we go through our principal atomic numbers, we, we then look at our secondaries, and then we look at our magnetics, and those tell you how many uh, orbitals you have broken down by the subshells. Okay, so that's what it would look like. So now what we have to do is start filling these subshells with electrons. Um, and that's where Hund's rule is going to come into effect. So, so again, we fill from the lowest energy up. So we're going to start filling electrons into here, and then here, and then here, 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 you know, however many electrons we have. But how exactly do we start filling these up? In particular, once we get to like 2p, how do we know what way these guys get filled up? Do we fill it up? Um, like we make sure this orbital's full of its two electrons and then this one's full of its two electrons and then this one, or do we spread them out first? What do we do? Uh, so that comes up to Hund's rule. Hund's rule. Hund's rule. And Hund's rule states that uh, when you're within a subshell, the electrons will spread themselves out among the empty orbitals before they start to double up. Electrons spread out uh, amongst empty orbitals before doubling up. Okay. 
So let's, let's use this idea for oxygen. Remember, oxygen has eight electrons. So the smallest subshell we have is the 1s, and the 1s subshell only has one orbital. Okay. But within this orbital, remember, as we talked about with the Pauli exclusion principle, we can have two electrons existing within this orbital, and they differ by their spin. So we'll draw them like this. This is my first electron with an up spin, and this is my second electron with a down spin. So I have now, I've now used two of the eight electrons that I have at my disposal. Okay. Um, that's that first subshell. Next subshell is 2s, and that one also just has one orbital, and the two electrons look like that. Uh, the next uh, subshell I have is 2p, and 2p has three orbitals. So now we look at how we're going to place these three orbitals in here. By Hund's rule, we have to spread them out amongst the orbitals first before doubling them up. So I have four electrons left, right? I've used two and two. So of my eight, I have four electrons left. So I would put my first one here. I would not then put my second one here. I would have to, by Hun's rule, I would have to spread them out. So I would put my first one here, then my second one here, then my third one here. And now that I'm out of orbitals within the subshell, now I can start doubling up. So now I would put my fourth one here, and that's all of them, right? We only have four electrons left uh, because we already used four. So this is what the orbital diagram looks like for oxygen. Okay. Um, so then it asks, how many unpaired electrons does oxygen have? And that, that means exactly what it sounds like. Pairs of electrons means um, orbitals that have both of the electrons in them. These two electrons are paired together. So if we look at our orbital, orbital diagram, we have two orbitals that have unpaired electrons. So we have two unpaired electrons here. And those unpaired electrons will become uh, very important uh, later in chemistry, those unpaired electrons are actually the ones that, that do these chemical reactions. They interact with other unpaired electrons on other atoms, and that's how you form chemical bonds. So unpaired electrons are, are sort of the most powerful electrons that you have uh, when chemical reactions occur. But that is what the orbital diagram looks like. Uh, in the next couple videos, we will talk about electron configurations, which, which uses this idea and just sort of streamlines it. Because this is kind of clunky. Right, writing out uh, each subshell and then writing out you know the little boxes and drawing the electrons. It's kind of clunky, um, so we're gonna we're gonna use electron configuration to to write this out a little bit nicer in in future videos. Uh, so thank you for watching. As I mentioned, I work for the tutoring centers at ASU. If you want more information about the free tutoring services available on all four major ASU campuses and online, check out tutoring.asu.edu/content/tutor-search. If you go here, you'll be able to find a tutor on your campus or online that'll be able to help you with your class specifically. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.